If I could just work out this microphone. Yeah, would you look at that? It's giant robot time. This is the XV-104 Riptide Battlesuit for the Tau Army from the popular tabletop game known as Warhammer 40,000. You may have heard of it. Now I know very little about the Tau, but I look forward to learning some interesting facts along the way, as well as making some of my own up, just to keep you on your toes, as together we will paint this enormous robot as a special gift for someone. XV-104 Riptide or is that supposed to be Roman numerals for 1604? This date being relevant because in history, this was the last known unquestionable sighting of a supernova occurring in the Milky Way galaxy, known as Kepler's supernova. Perhaps this is a creative homage to the mysterious galactic prowess of the Tau. Or there is the 1604 high capacity waste disposal unit. So maybe they're just telling us that the Tau are garbage. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Taking a look inside the box, and I have a few options on how I'd like to build the robot. Standing up, kneeling down, and a whole bunch of different weapons and equipment that I don't care enough to learn about right now. So I'm going with the rule of cool, and I'll pick out what I think looks impressive. Option one, option two, or option three. I might be able to cut some of the limb joint connectors and see if I can create my own pose. Last time I did this with the Furioso Dreadnought, it looked like he was about to fall over. So I wonder if I've learned anything since then. Whilst I put this model together, how about I tell you who I'm painting this model for and why I'm saying thank you to them. It's for Dingles, and he's a close friend and he's been assisting me with the channel since its creation almost two years ago. He edited the first four videos in entirety, he's created all the thumbnails, and he's come over and filmed the really pretty army showcase videos for my Orcs, Tyranids, and Death Guard. Dingles doesn't collect or play 40k, but does still have a healthy interest in all manner of nerdy things, and roughly six months ago, he mentioned that he liked the Tau robots because they look cool and they had that whole Pacific Rim thing going on. I've tried to lure him in front of the camera a handful of times, but he has assured me that his superior masculine jawline will steal all the attention away from me. So my way of saying thank you to Dingles is to create some specific rim for his specific chin. Now on the first take, I accidentally said specific rim, and I felt really uncomfortable, and I need each of you to know that. Although, that could be a really good slogan for our merch hoodies. Is someone writing these down? If you'd like to get your hands on this model to either paint along with me or show me how it's done in another style, I'll add some links in the video description for a local store to you that will have discount prices on this model and others just like it. A lot of the model is still in sub-assembly and the reason for this is that I don't want the base to be flat and if I commit to the exact pose on the model now then it might be tricky to have the base match it perfectly. So I'll push this aside for a minute and start on the base. You know that things are getting serious when I bust out the plastic kid smoothie cup. Sculpt a mold mixed with water is a rough, bulky way to start giving shape to the base, and while it's still wet, I can grab a selection of spare parts and push them in. My plan is for this to look like battlefield debris, with some of it having been here for so long that the ground is reclaiming it. I wet the top again and sprinkle a mix of different sands and cat litter, because there's something funny about doing it each time. Plus. Dingles has a cat, so I'm sure he'll appreciate it. With the basic shape of the base completed, I can scoop up my parts of my legally distinct Gundam and create a pose. A mix of Mod Podge, plaster, and water is a cost-effective way to create a fast drying base filler to go all around the edge of where the sculptor mold joins the base. I've primed the battle suit with a white rattle can and the base with black. Now you'll see me playing around with an airbrush here and don't freak out. Anything I do with an airbrush in this video, you can also do with a brush. I just like to play around with different tools to mix it up. You don't need an airbrush for any of this and you don't need to be a brain sturgeon to follow along with these painting techniques. 
I'm spraying in the larger shadow areas with a bone colour. One of my concerns with painting a big white model is that if I don't have any shadows or interest going on, then it will look really flat and unrealistic. Yes, my concern is that a 50 foot tall robot will look unrealistic. While the airbrush is out, I've given the base a spray from above with white, which as you will soon discover is pretty pointless because I'll cover it all with opaque browns and greys in a minute anyway. I actually paint a lot more of the base here, but you're here for the comically sized bringer of death. So I've got to keep the masses happy. Back to the robot. Here's how it's looking with some gentle shadows and still in partial sub-assembly. With the arms removed, I think it will be easier to reach into some of those trickier spots. Blocking out additional colours, and I'm starting with red. Red and white, this impressive machine is going to look like he's brought to us by Laramie cigarettes. And that's on purpose. I wanted this model to be painted in a style that I think Dingles will enjoy. We both love Formula One, and I know that Dingles has a soft spot for the late 80s, early 90s McLaren cars, which were painted in the iconic Marlboro livery. This channel doesn't condone smoking cigarettes. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. This channel only condones smoking your enemy in melee combat. Sorry, tower players, that's a cheap shot. I know you like to hide in the corner of the board, like a camper in Call of Duty or as it's otherwise known, COD. That's enough red for now. The brown of these large sections is trying to help my gold colors go down easier later on. I'm not even sure what these sections are for. Maybe it houses some of the important energy. Part Nova Reactor and part Fish. This clone of Voltron's nephew will be right at home rampaging cities in Japan. Grey is next, not very exciting, but it's a way of me adding an accent colour without overdoing it. I want to introduce some blues for effects later, so I can't have too much going on or it'll start to look like a Volkswagen Beetle full of Harlequins. And a whole bunch of black sections for the mechanical business beneath the armour. The Tau are an intellectually superior life form, so I imagine that this fast and agile part-time drone enthusiast is sporting a lightweight and tough material. If you're a Tau collector or gamer, be sure to let me know below what is it that's so special about the Tau Riptide battlesuit. And between now and the end of the video, I'm gonna see if I can break you with my terrible fish jokes. Yes, fancy sticker time. Couple of things. First, I put the decals on nice and early during the painting process. And the reason being that all of that weathering and highlighting effects to come can be applied across the decals as well. And I think this helps them to look more natural on the model. Secondly, I don't speak fish. I mean, I barely speak English, so I'm selecting random symbols from another language that I think look cool, much like a backpacker getting a tattoo in Thailand. These are from the Riptide section of the sheet, so probably the worst I can really do here is put something on upside down or incorrectly identify an important part of the model. Tau robots like Optimus Brian over here can look fantastic if you paint them to be in pristine condition to represent the Tau keeping them immaculately serviced and prepared for combat. And they can also look great with some battle damage against those large armor panels. This can convey the message that they deployed and have been in ferocious ongoing warfare from the very corner of the board. You'll see me work my way around the model using sponge to create an irregular chipping pattern and shortly my brush for some scratches. And whilst this is happening, I can tell you a little about the channel Patreon, which has recently launched. My goal for this year will be to improve the quality and the number of videos that I can bring to YouTube. And if becoming a part of that and part of the channel family is something that excites you, this is a way that you can contribute because without this support, these videos aren't possible. Patreon members get access to our Discord where we share our works in progress, give each other hobby tips and tricks, and also take part in painting competitions where you can win awesome prizes, like me painting models for you for free. And the best part is, you don't even need to be a good painter to win. There's around 50 of us in there already, and we even have some Tau collectors in there, like Tiny. 
He's looking suitably scratched and damaged for my taste, so I'll jump into some contrast paints. Contrast paints got a bad rap from some people when they landed, but a whole host of painters quickly discovered some cool ways to use them outside of the initial premise of being a speed paint. I thin down Fire Slayer Flesh, which is a ready brown, with some contrast medium, and I'm glazing this from across the bottom sections of the armour panels. For me, this looks like a mix between a shadow and a thin layer of grime. If you'd like the transition to be really smooth, then thin it down even more and settle into painting several coats. But I like the more jagged transition, as this helps it to look like weathering as opposed to shadow. For streaks of grime on the armour panels, I pick out a brown and an orange from the army painter, thin them down a little, and then in a downward motion, I first create the streak, and then with a cotton bud ear thingy, whilst it's still damp, I drag the lower section of it like this. Once dry, I repeat the process with orange in the centre of the brown areas to look like sections of rust, or alternate coloured grime. If you're about to sass me because there's no medals on this battle suit, you can't catch me, I'm too slippery. Edge highlighting my way around the model with the brightest white I could find, which is dead white from Vallejo. For the red armour, I'll show you another easy technique to learn for our painters that are seeking more tools for their painting toolbox. Wet blending sounds difficult, but on this shield, watch how basic and easy it can be. My base coat went down earlier, and now I'm going a stage brighter in the raised areas. And then whilst it's still wet, we grab our next brighter colour and mush them together at the very top. If you're looking for another way to highlight armour panels instead of the Games Workshop traditional way of a layer and an edge highlight around the border, then consider giving this a try. Then using an orange-red mix, I add the sharp border on the raised sections to hopefully draw attention to them and make the red stand out. Using a dark bluey green colour like Stegodon, I'm working my way around the black sections and giving these a fat layer. Given that it's black and this colour isn't much brighter, my carefree layering approach can be concealed a little easier. Concealed. Like a flounder. Sotec Green is one stage brighter and makes for a pretty highlight on the dark panels. Have a nice quality sharp brush and edge highlighting can be quick and painless. Ooh, link below for the brushes I use. Now the Riptide comes with drones that I imagine are to help protect and repair it. They probably clear it from debris, much in the way that large ocean dwelling mammals are cleaned by remoras. They normally come on clear plastic flying stands, which is helpful when playing the game, but this model is for display only, so shortly I'm going to try and have them as part of the model. More on that soon. For now, back to the base. A whole bunch of fairly bland base coats are going down to start with. Browns, greys and metallics. Now if you want something to look really weathered, I start with the brown as my base coat and then using the sponge for what would have been the original colour. In this case, blue. I've picked blue because that's the colour I will use for that Ion Accelerator Cannon Glow and by adding some blue to the base, I aim to tie it to the model a little. Some muddy looking wash over the rubble, the metals and this big chunk of plane wing to start the weathering. I'm not great with bases, and along with posing of models, these are some areas that I'm trying to improve on this year, but I do still have fun with them. Dirty Down Rust is an easy to use technical paint that will give you random rust looking effects across your surface. You can use it on its own, or as I do, use it alongside other techniques. Some metals won't rust, and instead will have a patina effect where they oxidise and turn blue like the Statue of Liberty, hashtag freedom. Again, I return to the contrast paint range to pick a blue and thin this down. Now we're at the business end of painting this model and I've used a poor man's method of pinning it to the base, which involves toothpicks and UV resin. I'm not proud of it, I don't want to show you, and we're going to move on without any questions. Thank you. The keen-eyed amongst you will realise that the model is now positioned in the opposite direction on the base. When I was playing around with fitting it, I accidentally discovered that this also fit and I preferred the look. So here we are. Drones. 
Okay, so I want them to hover and not be fixed to flying stands on the base. I'm onto something, but we'll come back to it in a second. I gotta finish this base. The army painters spoil me and they could sense that my base still needed something. They've sent me some wasteland style grass flock and grass tufts. Using PVA, I'm adding the grass in patchy sections and tucking in some of the grass tufts on the edges of debris, which again, helps to show how long they've been here if the grass is growing through them. Okay, drone time now. I can't claim this idea as my own. I've been inspired by El Miniaturista on Instagram and I'll add links to his page so that you can see his amazing work and give him the credit that he deserves. I'm making small triangle pieces using hard clear plastic and then fixing it in place to the drone's viewfinder lens with UV drying resin. I'm avoiding super glue as I don't want the cloudy effect. I mean, I kind of do, but I want to control it. You'll see what I mean. I want the drones to appear as though they've been scanning and repairing the Riptide battlesuit mid combat to keep it functioning. So shortly I'll attach them to the model and it might just look like they are hovering. The airbrush is set up and I'm spraying the white ink along the edges of the plastic and on the Riptide itself for areas that I want to be glowing like the Ion Plasma Cannon Barrel, Exhaust and Battery Pack. Then a fluorescent blue ink goes on over the top of all those white ink areas. This should afford us a really simple glow effect and we don't have to wait any longer to find out if it worked. Let's see how the Tau XV-104 Riptide Battlesuit has turned out. Dingles, my friend, I hope that you like your model. You'd better like it. And I hope that it can perch upon your shelf and act as a reminder for you of all the hard work that you've put into my dorky little channel over the last couple of years, how much it's meant to me, and the fact that all of it was completely unpaid. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. To everyone, thank you so much for watching and be sure to let me know below what it is that you'd like to see on the channel over the next year. And to our Tau gamers and painters, thank you for being good sports and tell me what it is about the Tau that you enjoy so that I can grow and learn to enjoy them as much as you do. You all mean the world to me. I've been Mike, Dingles has been chained in the basement making thumbnails and you, you've been awesome. So I'll see you on the next one. Barramundi.